How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the Baltimore Orioles, a team a lot of you guys have been asking for and a team that definitely needs some help. So before we hop into this rebuild, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And also let me know some other teams you would like for me to rebuild in the future. I definitely have some teams in mind. So if you guys want to see it, make sure you go and leave a comment down below. Make sure you also subscribe to or not subscribe. Go ahead, follow my Twitter um, any other social media links and go and follow my twitch channel I've been streaming there at night um, just to kind of show what's going on behind camera like what's going on off camera I should say with um, grinding for the immortals and stuff like that so if you guys want to see what's going on you know outside of videos go follow that twitch channel and I'll definitely let you guys know whenever we go live so with this Orioles team we're not even going to waste any more time let's just hop into it let's talk about the roster there's definitely some moves that need to be made so, you know, let's just not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to stop saying I'm going to stop saying so so many times because I've already noticed I've said it like 20 times. But starting pitching wise with the Orioles, not not too bad. Your first two, Dylan Bundy, Kevin Gosman, not a bad two starters to kind of build with. Um, obviously not not too much we do have hunter harvey there who could develop into someone nice but outside of that we're looking pretty pretty thin on the starting pitching relief wise michael Givens, not bad for right now um richard blyer not bad for right now brad brock could be okay but again unless we're looking for the future way down the line we're kind of stuck and kind of thin on the relief pitching and then closing pitching, we're looking pretty solid. I'm probably going to be moving Darren O'Day just because he is the older of the two closers. But Zach Britton, probably going to stay our closer for now. And then Darren O'Day will be someone that we trade um, to find a new, you know, maybe a starter, maybe a reliever, maybe some other position. Um, catcher wise, I really want Chance Cisco to take over. A potential, 23 years old. He just looks like a player who will develop quite nicely. Caleb Joseph. He's just going to be, you know, the player that we stick there until we get Chance Cisco um, MLB ready. First base, we need a new first baseman. Both of these guys are aging. Chris Davis' contract is stupid. Um, we need them both out of our team, and we need a new first baseman for sure. Second baseman, Jonathan Scope. I'm cool with him staying around. I know his contract ends at the end of the year, but if we can keep him around, I'm perfectly fine keeping him here. Um... And then outside of that, you know, we're not we're not looking too good. Third baseman wise, we definitely need a new third baseman. Shortstop, <sighs> Manny Machado wants out in real life, and I feel like you guys have been asking for a little bit of realism in these rebuilds. So maybe I trade Manny Machado, maybe I keep him. It's it's a toss up. I don't know just yet. We'll have to see what we do. But I think. It may just to kind of go with the realistic type thing. Maybe Machado's out the door for this one. Um, Trey Mancini is perfectly fine. I also know he plays first base. And um, I've also seen in like my comments that I got Trey Mancini in a previous rebuild that he used to play first base more often than he did outfield. And he only plays outfield because Chris Davis is at first. So maybe we move him to first and maybe we get a new outfielder instead. Adam Jones is someone I'm looking to replace. And Colby Rasmus is as well. Um, along with Mike or Mark Trumbo and Craig Gentry. So it's an aging team for sure. And we're going to be looking to build and get rid of some of these older players and find some new ones. Anthony Santander looks to be a decent player for the future. But outside of that, we're, we're looking kind of thin in prospects as well as just players we can use right now. Um, Angel Vielma could be good for the future, but really... We're kind of stuck and we're, I mean, I want to find players that we can add. I definitely need some new starters. We definitely need some new relievers. We're going to need a third baseman, first baseman, um, center fielder, right fielder. <laughs> like we need a whole new team and uh, I'm not too sure how we're going to do it. So uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. Let's make some trades. Let's make some signings, maybe in the free agency pool, just to kind of help us for the first season. Let's get through this first season really quickly. And let's uh, really start to build that second season. So I'm going to make a couple trades this year. And I'll catch you guys. I'll show you everything once that happens. First trade we're making is a new pitcher. Um, it is a rookie in Fernando Romero. B potential 74 overall 23 year old. We are getting rid of 
a little bit you know we're getting rid of one of our worst rated players in ryan mckenna 56 overall um and then also we're getting rid of the one of those first basemen i was talking about chris davis i want him out the door he is a power hitter but it's time for him to go and we're also getting rid of our backup second baseman tim beckham or beckham however it's beckham um we're getting rid of those three players for fernando romero really good potential i like the looks of adding a new starting pitcher and we're just going to throw him into the rotation right away because he's one of our better starting pitchers anyway so that's gonna be the first trade we're making the next trade we're making is you already see whose name is there and it's manny machado a player who's actually in real life been rumored to join the chicago cubs we're gonna be doing a swap for Javi Baez and Manny Machado. And you guys are probably thinking, I'm crazy. Why am I getting rid of Machado? Well, we're basically getting a new shortstop in Javi Baez. He can play that shortstop position he has for the Cubs. And they're the same age. They're a little bit different in rating. But it's, it's basically swapping Baez for Machado here. We're also getting another starting pitcher in Drew Smiley, 28 years old. B potential 75 overall and we're getting rid of another player that I was looking to get rid of in Darren O'Day um, another player we're getting rid of is Preston Palmero 49 overall not gonna get any better and we're adding a right fielder with B potential in Eddie Martinez so for what we're giving up I think this is one of the better um, like player packages that we could get back uh, Baez is going to develop quite nicely his contract isn't that bad and then when you look at what machado was would be getting paid and he may not even re-sign with the cubs so who knows maybe we could re-sign him in free agency move Baez to second and then get machado back so we'll we'll see what happens maybe in free agency we bring him back so but for right now this is this is a really good trade for a player who I'm okay with letting go for right now so smiley Baez, and martinez is coming in for machado o'day and palmero the next player we're gonna be training for is yimi garcia of the dodgers another bullpen arm just because we 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 need them like you can see we only have three that are 70 or above so we really need a bullpen arm 74 overall not that great but he does have b potential and it's kind of in that prime age that could definitely develop so we are going to be getting rid of cole billingsley um craig gentry who's pretty you know he's he's pretty old and then also one of our starting pitchers that i don't think we're going to be using anymore with the addition of romero and smiley and that's going to be chris tillman who we're getting rid of all right the last move we're going to be making is adding trevor rosenthal for three and a half years over or three and a half million over two years um he should accept that so i'm going to move the lineup around the start of season one in the regular season, you're gonna see Bundy, Gosman, Smiley, Cobb, and Romero as our starters. The bullpen currently looks like this. Scott Givens are the long relievers. Um, Brad Bach, Brock, uh, Blyer, Castro, Garcia, Rosenthal, and Britton uh, rounds up the bullpen. In the lineup, you can see this is the righties versus DH. Jones, Baez, Mancini, Alvarez, Scope, Santander, Trumbo, Rasmus, and Cisco. And then versus lefties, it's um, Baez, Valencia, Mancini, Rasmus, Scope, Trumbo, Jones, Nunez, and Joseph. So it's basically identical for no DH and DH. So that's the team we're rocking with. It's not the best. I'm not expecting really anything good. I'm just hoping that we don't get absolutely smashed. So let's go to the draft day and I'll see you guys then. It is draft day and we have the ninth pick. And I wanted Richie Reyes, who went to the Reds. That I wanted him. That was actually a player I wanted. We're gonna go with Ryan Ryan White, the lefty third baseman, or the left-handed batter third baseman. Good contact, good power, plate vision, plate discipline, and fielding. Looks to be a pretty solid third baseman. So we're gonna go with him for our for our first round draft pick. I'm gonna go with a guest here and go with Kenny Madrigal. Every single player I wanted this draft has been taken. And I had two that I really wanted for the first two picks. And they were taken. So I'm kind of stuck now because I heavily focused on a couple, like a few players that I scouted. And then I went through a bunch of random players. But this was the player we're going to take a guess with. And I'm really bummed that those first two players were taken. Yeah, I'll show you when I pick it. Oh, no, you know what? I like the looks of this one. Leslie Castilla. 
that's the next pick hopping into the third round our fourth pick in total i'll show you when i find him so i'm torn between two um danny ikeda based on his power fielding speed and stealing or this catcher looks pretty good as well pedro moreno good contact good fielding good you know decent strength decent blocking so i'm kind of stuck between him or ikeda um even stephen baker doesn't look too bad for a starting pitcher so i ooh, this is tough I'm going to take a chance on the Japanese right fielder, Ikeda. So you know what? I'm not even going to hesitate. I'm going to take this catcher, and hopefully it works out well. We're going Lonnie Sor Nope, nope, nope. That's the wrong one. <laughs> it's Elroy Jackson that we're going with for that pick. Um, this is the fifth round, so we got one more. And it's basically whoever is one of the higher rated ones. So it's going to be Castaneda, Sawyer, Serrano, or another Castaneda. So... I don't like him. Eh. Sawyer. We'll go with Sawyer. That's the last pick. So let's go check out how our picks turned out. Lately, they haven't been going too well. So let's see how they went. Not a bad draft. Um, Ryan White is a 70 overall already. And he has the potential to be 95. Holy cow, that is a great pickup for that first round pick the worst one was the second one kenny madrigal the uh relief pitcher i thought he was actually pretty decent but he looks to be the worst one and he's up to a 57 overall but 78 potential so unfortunately he won't be that great but the rest look really good leslie castilla 20 years old 54 overall 87 potential that he looks like he'll be a good future star um Danny Ikeda, the Japanese outfielder, has 83 speed and 89 stealing already with 72 power versus righties. He's 62 overall and has an 83 potential. The next one is that catcher, Pedro Moreno. He's only 48 overall, but he's got an 89 potential. So that is really nice to see. Elroy Jackson, 58 overall. He's got an 87 potential. So he's looking to be a really good future prospect and the last one dexter sawyer six or 86 overall potential or 86 potential 51 overall and he's already got 83 velocity so we made some really good picks this year the only you know subpar one was kenny madrigal and he's got 78 potential so that's not even that bad either but this was this was a top draft class and i'm liking what we're doing so i'm gonna see you guys at the trade deadline day at the trade deadline we are sitting at 50 and 58 so i was kind of expecting something along those lines we're 24 games out of the first place spot and we're in the east so it's gonna be a tough division going against the red sox and the yankees even the wild card were 10 and a half games out so i wasn't expecting that much you know that many positives this first year so let's quickly look at everything um, you can see Bundy, okay. Gosman, not too bad actually. That's a pretty decent uh, stat line. Smiley, that's a pretty decent stat line as well. Cobb, eh. And then Romero, he's having an okay year as well. Looking at the bullpen, we're struggling. Blyer's actually having a really solid year. Um, but outside of that, it's looking like we're... And Britain, not too bad there either. So he's not having a bad year. But overall pitching struggling a little bit looking at the squad Baez is hitting 282 with 20 homers almost and 60 RBI so that's that's pretty good actually Santander's hitting 281 Mancini's hitting 268 um, Scope is hitting 310 that's great to see he's up to a 90 Alvarez is hitting 276 Rasmus is hitting 217 Adam Jones is hitting just under 250 Caleb Joseph is hitting 223 and Chance Sisko is hitting 223 on the bench you can see what's going on there um we're we're about doing what i expected i really want to solidify this this the pitching before we really hit hard with the lineup so we're gonna have to make a trade i don't know what we're gonna do yet but once i figure that out i'll let you guys know a trade we're making at the deadline is going to be jace peterson the 27 year old who's 60 uh 27 year old who's 67 overall um mike yestrzemski yestrzemski uh you know, whatever. You, you see the name. And then Colby Rasmus, who is hitting 217. 
um, for our new right fielder and Steven Piscotti of the Athletics. He's almost an 80 overall. He's having a pretty good year and you can see his stats are developing quite nicely. So I think this is a really solid trade. It's not a blockbuster trade, but it's a player who's going to help us in right field who we, we've had some trouble hitting, you know, we're hitting under 220 with Colby Rasmus. So I think Piscotti is definitely going to help us out there. At the end of the season, we finished 71 and 91. I mean, like I said, I wasn't expecting good things. The playoff bracket there is on the left-hand side, the Dodgers and the Cubs, and then the Nationals are waiting for the Giants or so the Rockies. The Twins are taking on the Astros. The Indians are taking on the Red Sox and the wild card to take on the Yankees. So we won an award gold glove for trey mancini at first let's take a look at how the season finished bundy went 13 and 15 437 average or era um you know eh eh we'll check i mean it's not a horrible year he's developing still that's basically what i want to see after season one same same with steven goss or not steven kevin gossman he's up to an 80 he finished 12 and 13 um, with a 363 ARA. So that's actually pretty solid. Um, I want to see players developing at this point. So you can see he had a 332 ERA. That's solid to see. His stats are going up. Cobb's going down. So he might be, it might be time for him to go. And then Romero, he, he's still going up. So that's good to see. This is a season where I wanted to get through it pretty quickly. And I want to see development from my pitchers. Castro's going up in some stats, going down in a couple as well. He had an okay year, nothing crazy. Gabriel Yanoa had an, an all right year. Um, his stats are kind of stalling out there. Brad Bach, or Brock, had a three ERA, but his stats are starting to decrease besides his walks and some of his fielding stats. So it might be time to, you know, maybe move on from him. Richard Blyer had a phenomenal year in the innings he was given. Um, and he's kind of stayed the same. Trevor Rosenthal's going up in stats. And his year, yeah, his year was okay. Michael Givens is starting to go down. So maybe time to move on for him while he still has a little bit of value. And Yimi Garcia is going up in value um, based on his stats. And Zach Britton, he's going up in overall as well. He had 42 saves and a 381 ERA. Six blown saves. So really what I'm looking for in season one is development in stats. Some players are, some players aren't in the rotation. Javi Baez had a little bit of a rough second half. Um, his power versus righties went down, but everything else is continuing to grow. Steven Piscotti kind of stayed the same, but he's, he's his stats you can see are developing and he hit 250 on the year. Trey Mancini's up to an 80. He's going up quite nicely and you see he hit 29 homers. 286 and a 322 on base percentage so he at first base is definitely our first baseman for the future jonathan scope hit 290 so i'm definitely going to be looking to bring him back he looks to be our second baseman for the future and i really like what we're doing here um an idea is maybe move scope to third because he can play that position and if machado's there in free agency maybe bring him back pedro alvarez He's aging, so I'm not expecting too much from him. Same with Danny Valencia. He's aging as well, but he had an okay year. Adam Jones, I'm looking to move on from Adam Jones. Caleb Joseph, like I said, is basically just here until Chan Sisko really peaks in his catcher position. You can see he's already developing very, very well. Um, Nunez is another player I'm looking to develop. He had an okay year. Um, Trumbo is aging, so if he starts to decrease, I'm not too worried about it. And Santander is another player I'm looking to develop. And he looks like he had a pretty good year in development as well. Looking at exclusive free agents, I do want to bring back Zach Britton, but he wants over 10 mil a year. And I feel like we can definitely get a closer for a lot cheaper. Um, and the rest of the players, you can see they're well into the 30s. So I think it's time to move on from them. Um, and let's just sim into free agency because uh it, you know it's it's time to spend some cash Alrighty, we offered every one of these players arbitration besides ruben tejada we let him go so we're going into the tendered contracts trey mancini i will definitely i'll show you the contracts that we we do um once i figure them out so the contracts we've offered are trey mancini three years nine million blyer three years five million romero two years one million um cisco two years one million and you three years 1.6 million um santander two years three million castro two years two million 
and that's really about it um oh harvey got one as well and a couple other prospects that we have so let's look at free agency manny machado is there and I think that's going to be the move that we do make. So as you can see, we signed Manny Machado to a 15-year deal worth $21.55 I really think that was the only way we're going to get him. And uh, looking at the squad now, I'm going to move Baez back to his natural position of second. And then move Scope to third. So, I mean, we're our infield looks nice really really good a trade we're making in the offseason is bringing in paul sewald from the mets or seawald for cashner and alex cobb we're bringing in another bullpen arm um so we we don't really need to bring in another one we're still looking for a closer um so maybe we move some of our prospects that we have um, especially some of these center field ones because we have like three decent ones so maybe we can get a closer for that a trade at the beginning of the second season is going to be cedric mullins who he, he's got a lot of competition in the center of field position along with joey reichard and then um the shortstop angel vielma i know he's really like he's one of those players that's in real life really highly thought of but we got machado back and he's not gonna push machado out of the lineup anytime soon so we're getting rid of a lot of youth for a 82 overall starting pitcher in Tyler Skaggs. I feel like we need another lefty in the rotation and it'll help with just how everything looks. We still are in need of a center fielder, but for right now, with Tyler Skaggs in, the team's looking a little bit better. Skaggs will get better once his um, once he adjusts to the team once the season starts. So this is what we're looking like with the new addition of Seawald um, or Sewald. This is the starting rotation. It looks really good. Rosenthal is going to be our setup guy. Britton we brought back. Um, I just couldn't find another closer. And you can see this was the contract that we offered him over six years. Lineups looking like this. Um, once we take out our DH, this is what we're looking like. I, we, I could use Renato Nunez. He can play center field. So we could do that for the time being um, and just go with that for the season. Um, but I'm not too sure yet. I do want to add a center fielder, but I don't think we have anything right now that would work. So I think that's going to be the way we're going to start season two. Let's go to the draft or the trade deadline. I'm going to let the CPU handle the draft, even though we had a really good draft last year. And uh, I'll see you guys at the deadline. At the deadline, we're seven and a half games out of the East in the wild card. We're two and a half games out. So it's actually a pretty close race so far at the deadline so you can see the draft picks 50 overall 92 potential for a right fielder looks good um 83 potential for a left fielder who's 51 overall um 94 potential for a closer who's currently 62 overall 93 potential for another closer who's 59 overall um and then ruben hunter another starter who's 60 overall he's got a potential of 91 and then we have a 79 potential closer in troy brennan who's 57 overall and then a 70 who i'm not going to sign so the cpu handled this draft quite nicely quickly looking at the pitching rotation i'm just going to show you the stats here because i don't want to spend too much time on it as it is trade deadline day so you can see how the stats are doing um we do have, currently have a starter who's hurt so we just let you Noah take over in that time um i feel like we need a long reliever i feel like that is really where we're getting hit hard in the uh pitching um the bullpen i feel like this is this spot right here is where we're getting hit hard pretty pretty badly 89 overall for baez piscotti's down to a 78 which isn't great to see um, machado's up to a 97 mancini's up to an 86 scopes and at 81 trumbo nunez cisco and santander and we got culberson who we signed from free agency in the offseason and Caleb Joseph. So the squad's looking all right. Let's see how the farm system's looking. Pitching wise, we got we got some B potential players down here, but nothing too crazy. Same with the relief pitching. Moving into catching, same thing. First base, same thing. Second base, eh. Third base, we do have that Ryan White that we drafted last year, who's up to a 73 already. And he looks like he could be a player we need to keep our eyes on. Center field, they're doing okay in the minors. Austin Hayes is starting to develop quite nicely. And then 
nothing really going on here Akeda, our draft pick from last year tore his acl which is horrible to see in his first year so we do need to strengthen the bullpen a bit on the disabled list you can see smiley is hurt for another 16 days um, his year is doing okay from what you can see so we do need to kind of strengthen up the bullpen and just don't know where to go with it so i'm going to see what we can do and catch you guys in a sec the player we're going to be trading for at the deadline is yasel ya oh my gosh yasel sierra man i can't speak today 27 years old i know i picked him up in a previous rebuild but i'm really liking the fact that he has 70 stamina so he's going to fill that long relief role that we need 79 overall we are going to be getting rid of one of our pitching um starting pitchers I, I signed him in the free agency you can see he's from the arizona system um i picked him up in free agency he's looks actually pretty decent um and then we're getting rid of one of our second basemen that i mean you can see we have so many stacked up we're getting rid of adrian marin and then um our right fielder and adamar rifai rifai oh my god I, okay we're just gonna call him adamar because i cannot speak today so we're bringing in a new long reliever which i think is going to help us out so much the trade we're making at the deadline is tyler naquin of the indians normally plays left field we might move piscati to center maybe move naquin to right we're getting rid of our two center field prospects in brugman and hayes i know not the smartest of moves but we're just outside of a wild card spot and we're adding dylan peters to the deal as well we're adding a lot for this deal and i feel like i we're overdoing it but we're at the deadline we need someone that's going to help us push us into that wild card spot and i'm i'm really regretting this trade but i feel like it's the trade we need i feel like we need something and i and i feel like it's been lacking like another outfield spot so, so this is the lineup with the addition of naquin i went with naquin in center piscati still in right and santander's in left you can see the squad's looking pretty decent um for the most part the pitching rotation once smiley comes back will he'll go in that fifth spot and then the bullpen with the addition of sierra we're looking pretty solid i think we can push for that wild card spot and I mean, if we can get a streak, I think this is a pretty solid team where we could we could make a push in the playoffs this year. So let's see what we can do. Whoa, 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 whoa. We won the division. We went on a tear the second half of the season, like absolute craziness. Like there was this, I think it was, yeah, this month, I think what we lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games we lost. And then the end of the month, like the last month of the season, we lost a couple more. But we went on an absolute tear. You can see that we won a couple gold gloves, Machado, Santander, and Scope, which is great to see. And then Britain had the most saves in the AL. So let's look at let's look at how the season went, cause something something clicked. Bundy is an 89, even though his record doesn't really seem like he'd be an 89 but he had a 248 era that is absolutely insane um like that's just crazy gossman's up to an 82 actually all of our starters are in the 80s um but his era was higher than last year but i mean not a bad season romero he's up to an 80 he had a pretty solid year his era is at a 4.21 but still pretty solid numbers there skaggs is up to an 81 he went 11 and 9 with a 386 era which still is not bad for a fourth starter at all you can see his numbers there those aren't bad and then smiley he was injured but he came back and you can see his numbers were still pretty nice like our pitchers pretty did pretty well towards the end of the year um looking at the bullpen sierra did okay Blyer did okay. You know what? Uh, I mean, the bullpen's looking like it's kind of letting us down. Yimmy Garcia is one of the better ones. Same with Givens and Britton. He had 54 saves and only four blown saves. So that's good to see out of your closer. Moving into the lineup, you can see Na Naquin is in 78. But um, we moved him to center field, which is in his natural position. And he still hit 322 on the year. Um, Piscotti's in 80, which is great to see. He only hit 238 though, which isn't which isn't good. Machado's a 97. He hit almost 300. Like that is nuts. 35 homers, 105 ribbies, 14 stolen bases, 360 on base percentage. 
so he did really good this year Mancini's up to an 86 you can see he's developing quite nicely as well 283 average with a 315 on base percentage Jonathan scope is 81 um, so he's starting to kind of go down unfortunately he didn't have as good a year as last year um, Baez is an 87 I'm I'm liking the trade we did to have Machado go to the Cubs for a season and then we brought him back because Baez is developing. We had Trumbo and left for a bit. Um, Cisco got hurt and you can see Joseph really isn't helping us there. And then this is the bench. So let's look at Cisco's stats before he got hurt. He hit 239 and unfortunately he did get hurt. He tore a finger ligament and he was out. It says you, you can see how long he's out, but he was out for a little bit longer than that. Let's look at some of our prospects. Hunter Harvey's up to a 69 overall. Um, that's nice. Jeffrey Ramirez, he's up to a 69 as well. In the relief, um, Donnie Hart's a 71. We have Luis Isla, I believe his name is. He's up to a 70. I can't remember where he got from. Um, the first base or the catcher that we drafted, he's up to a 52. And then... This guy we signed, he, he's played all over the place, but he's up to a 68. Um, Ryan White was our very first pick of the draft. He's up to a 74. He's looking really, really good. Um, and then that's really about it because we got rid of our center field prospects. And then Danny, Danny Akeda got hurt, but he's still developing. So that's good to see. And then the player we got from the Cubs, Eddie Martinez, he's up to a 66. So, I mean, we, we've got some decent players, and I'm liking the looks of what we have. Um, so let's hop into these playoffs. I mean, I'm thinking we should do pretty well. We got we we won our division. Like, I want to see how much we won our division by. We won it by a game, but that's okay. We still won it. And uh, let's hop into these playoffs. You can see we are the eighth ranked team. I know I'm covering covering it up. Um, I'll move my camera real quick. You can see third contact. I mean, overall not a bad looking team. Speed wise, we're lacking a little bit, but. I feel good about this team, the way we turned it around this second half of the season. Game one of the playoffs. Let's see how we do. We get the win. There we go. Bundy, Gossman, Romero. Come on. All righty. And then we're moving on to take on the Indians or the Red Sox. We're going to be taking on the Indians. Let's hop into this. I'm feeling good. We, we had some good wins. 6-4, 10-3, 6-3. Three. I lost connection. Uh-oh. Did I get kicked? No, I didn't. Whew. Alrighty, round two of the playoffs. Can we win? Can Smiley get us off on the right foot? He does with an 11. Oh, Swald had to come in and give us the 11 to 9 win. Bundy versus Richards. We take the loss there. We go down 2 to 1. We get the 2 to 2. We're back even 2 to 2. We're down 3 to 2. So if we lose this, it's all over. So you know what time it is. It is quick manage time. We are in Cleveland for this one. We're going to let Bundy take the mound. We're going against a righty and Clevenger. Can Naquin start us off right? Nope. What about Piscotti? There we go. All right. A solo shot. And then that's it for the inning. But that's okay. No. Like, why? Why you got to do that to me? Why can't you just, like, let me hold the lead for a little bit, you know? Okay. Baez gets a walk. And then nothing comes of it. But we do get a double play out of that one. Santander, Joseph, Naquin, somebody. We're kind of run. We're, we're in the fifth inning already. We're going into the sixth soon. So we're in the sixth. Piscotti, you're our only run. So can you keep it going? Nope. Machado, Mancini. This will probably be Bundy's last inning. That definitely hurts right there. That, that run hurts. I'm going to let the CPU take over. We came back and won six to five. So you know what that means. We're gonna advance today. We're gonna quick manage the last game. I just, I wasn't feeling it. I was letting the CPU handle it and it worked out really well. So we're gonna let Smiley take the mound just because he's full, like full stamina. Man, I kinda wanna let, we're gonna go with this. All right, I feel good. I feel good about this one. Naquin, there we go. Piscotti, Machado. Mancini, bring them home. We get a leadoff double. We can't even take advantage of that. And they get a triple, but we do get out of it. Scope, singles, Baez, strikes out Trumbo. There we go. We get the run thanks to Santander. There, that's what I'm talking about. And then, How are we going to let Encarnacion steal? 
He's got like two speed. Naquin. There we go. Two for two for Naquin. Single. Can we move him? And a two run triple by Mancini. Scope brings home another run. And then we get, you know, we're out of the inning. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Santander, can you keep it going? Nope. Joseph, double. Naquin walks. Piscotti, double play. That's all right. Smiley, let's get out of this. No harm. Four shutout innings for Drew Smiley. I had a feeling about him, and it worked out. All right, give me at least one more inning. That's what I'm talking about. Trumbo for Salazar, no. Santander walks. Joseph flies out, and Naquin strikes out. All right. Give me through. Okay, that's a double. That's it. Pitching change. We're going to bring in Sierra. Gets the strikeout and gets the ground out. That's what I'm talking about. That was perfect. Piscotti strikes out Machado and Mancini. Adds a little bit more insurance with the homer. Okay. Alrighty. We're going to go. Hmm. We'll go Yimmy. Strikes him out. Walks the bases loaded. We're going to, you know, let the lefty come in and do some work. Okay, we got one runner out. Oh my. What is going on? This is not good. Givens come in. Gets the out. <sighs> Alright. Baez. Single. Okay, there we go. Double play. Yikes. Alright. Britain the closer. Okay. Oh, yes. Insurance run. Thanks to Machado. We're going to the World Series and taking on the Giants. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. We are on a hot streak. Like something clicked this second half of the season and we're looking good. Like so something clicked. I don't know what it is, but something clicked. So let's do this. All righty, World Series time. I'm going to line up the pitching rotation. So everyone needs to move down one. Let's see Skaggs, Smiley, yeah, we'll do that. Romero's pitching quite well, actually. And Bundy's having a little bit of a trouble. Little little bit of trouble. So we'll see how this goes. We do take the loss the first game. Gosman gets us back. Can Romero keep his hot start? He does. Man, he is killing it. So we're up two to one. Oh, two to two. Three to two. If we win this. World Series comes to Baltimore. Like, that is... <sighs> Bundy's... I just... I don't know if I can trust Bundy, you know? I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna take a risk. I'm gonna go with Gosman. I'm gonna go with Gosman. It might hurt us, but... It, this could be the right move. Hit by pitch, Piscotti's on first, Machado flies out, and then Mancini gets out. So, two run shot, okay. We do get a single though, then a fielder's choice, and we don't score back. So we're down two to nothing. Piscotti again, okay. Gets out of it though. Okay, still two to nothing, Mancini. Scope, Baez. Baez gets a double, okay. And then Trumbo strikes out. Can Gosman get us? to get the run base is loaded that's it for Gosman. yikes get some out at home there we go limit all right we limited the damage just as i said so i'm gonna let the cpu take it over we came back a little bit but just not good enough so that that decision may come back to haunt us <laughs> it may come back to haunt us Bundy's gonna pitch game seven. We need we need the win here. For sure. Like obviously we need the win. We get on first. Okay. We're looking good. We're looking good. I kinda wanna sack fly here. We get the run home. That's great. And then a double play. But that's alright. We're up one to nothing. Bundy. That, that I don't want that. That's scary. I don't like that. You know, I don't need this. We need it to be calm. We need to keep it. Like this, that's what we need. Naquin with the double with one out. And we need to score that, but that's okay. We're up one to nothing still. Mancini. Yes. 
Mancini, you are the man. Like, that was clutch. Two to nothing. We get out of that. There we go. Santander, Joseph, Naquin. Naquin triples. Piscotti, can you get us another insurance run? Machado strikes out. Okay. Bundy, come on. Get us out of it. There we go. Mancini, Scope, Baez. Baez with the solo shot. There we go. And then Trumbo walks. Santander singles and a fly out. So we're up three to nothing here in the seventh. I'm going to let Bundy go until another base runner reaches. That's it. And now he's facing a lefty. So we're going to let this lefty come in. And he gets the out. Naquin's up. He strikes out. Piscotti and then Machado. A string of righties here. So we're going to let this... the you know, Givens come in. He's the setup man. Double, but we do get out of it. Mancini, Scope, Baez, Trumbo. Some more insurance runs. No. So that means Zach Britton's coming in. Pop up, ground out, and we enter the game here. You guys know the rules. Something changed with this Orioles team. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate season three completely through see what happens um once this happens um, unless something crazy happens we are going to win a world series here in season two it's kind of like a tradition that we've been doing that we turn these teams around really quickly but like i said i want to see how this team develops so i'm going to sim really quickly after this um season three just to see how everything turns out can we do a repeat what's going to happen um but you can see we're taking on brandon crawford here For the third out, Zach Britton's gonna be pitching. We're gonna start off with the ball. Not great. So we gotta we gotta make sure that we hit our spots because it would suck to blow this. How is that not a strike blue? Alright, alright. 2-0 count. And he's gonna foul off the slider. We're up three to nothing. Brandon Crawford. I mean he lefty lefty. I'm not too worried about it. Nice paint the edge right there with the four seam. Let's see if he goes after the slider. See, yikes, he's not gonna go after that. So we got a full count now. We just gotta hit the spot, and it should be game over. Make the play, Jonathan Scope ends it, and we got a World Series for the Baltimore Orioles. We brought back Machado. We got a good trade with the Cubs to bring in Baez, and we turn this team around. Obviously, the outfield kind of lacked some power i mean we were sitting with piscotti naquin and santander it could be a lot better it really could have but with what we had we turned this team around bundy was an okay starter for an 89 overall i think he could have been a little bit better gosman pretty good for uh fernando romero turned into a pretty good starter during the postseason and you can see we won the world series there but i feel like baez mancini moving to first was a good idea then we had machado we had scope Cisco, if he didn't get hurt, probably would have hit high 70s. He missed a lot of the second half of the season. But you can see the Baltimore Orioles are World Series champions. And this rebuild is basically complete thanks to a Mancini homer and then a Baez homer as well. They were kind of the clutch players this game. So let's exit this. You can see Bundy pitched six and two thirds inning as I wasn't really talking good about him. He actually pitched pretty well in game seven. When I really was hesitant about using them. Try to sign everybody back and see if we can um, repeat. And if we can't repeat, you know, just see how everything goes, you know. As you can see, we simmed the next season. And we didn't even make the post season. So let's see what went wrong. Um, disabled list, I know for sure, was a big thing. I saw that Naquin, I think like two of our starters went on the disabled list at one point. Um, Piscotti went on this disabled list for, at one point and there was one more person I think one of our close like uh, it was Rosenthal Rosenthal went out for like three months Naquin was out for four months and then uh, I forgot what else happened Romero was pitching really bad so we had to find someone else so basically whatever could go wrong happened but you can see this the team looks really really good santander's went up to a 77 um this season cisco's up to a 78 this season nunez is an 81 naquin's an 80 scope is an 84 i'll move my 
Yeah, actually, one of my thing is it's fine. Um, Scope is up to an 84. Mancini's an 88. Machado's an 97. Piscotti's an 82, and Baez is a 91. So like, I don't know what happened. Even our first round draft pick from a cup from two seasons ago has is up to a 74. And then like our pitching isn't horrible. So I don't, I fit, I guess it was the bullpen that let us down again. So that's going to wrap it up guys. Unfortunately in season three, we didn't even make the playoffs. Um, but in season two, we did win a world series. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Orioles rebuild. If you did remember hit that like button, subscribe if you are new to the channel. I'll catch you all in the next rebuild. Peace.